chemistries and makeup. They're two things you don't normally associate with one another. But this Japanese monk defies most conventions. My name is Koro Nishimura. I am a Buddhist monk and also a makeup artist. Today he's working as the chief makeup artist for the Miss Universe Japan competition. The coronavirus has made times difficult for events like this one. He's helped the models with the basics through online tutorials and now he's giving them a final touch-up before they hit the catwalk. Today it's been pretty crazy. We started at 7 a.m. Now it's 2 p.m. I have been doing makeup for uh, almost all the contestants, uh, making sure they look perfect. Contests like this are big in places like the United States, but less common in Japan. For Kodo, they're an important chance to not only show off his skills, but share his story. Well, my idea of a Buddhist monk has changed. <laughs> my impression of a monk is a bit strict. And the monk I know is older and has a completely different image. I'm drawn into this monk who wears heels and full makeup. And I'd like to hear him preaching. I think Kodo is a person who should go out into the world more. In a world obsessed with perfection, it hasn't always been easy for Kodo, especially growing up. When I was young, I knew I was a boy. But I loved Disney princesses, um, I loved Little Mermaid, uh, Sailor Moon, and I always um, played with other girls. And I started to realize that um, being attracted to men or boys is something a little taboo, especially in Japan. So I started to feel really inferior of myself because I, I felt that I need to hide my interests, my honest emotions, and if I were to reveal my true self, uh, maybe I can be discriminated. For years throughout high school, Kodo felt confused with no one to talk to. It wasn't until after he graduated and went to study art in New York that he felt his world began to truly open up. It was an awakening at the New York Pride Parade. Disney was doing a float, giving out stickers of Mickey uh, with rainbow color. And I felt, well, I used to love Disney princesses and maybe all the princesses are um, rooting for me. Maybe they are um, supporting me. But I feel like I'm being empowered when I do makeup on. It's like a transformation. I'm the same person still, but I feel like I have stronger power. I feel like I am able to give a great impact to the society, which I am fighting uh, toward equal rights. But I feel like I can do something that I wasn't able to before I put on makeup. At 24, the family business came calling. His parents are both monks and run a temple in Tokyo. After years struggling to understand how he could fit in with Buddhism, he began his training but with many questions. Makeup is not encouraged in Buddhism. That was what I was thinking when I was young. Koda was initially told that monks weren't allowed to wear accessories and worried whether he was being true to himself while putting on makeup. But over time, he became more relaxed as he studied more. During the last training, I met the well-respected, uh, kind of well-known teacher, and I decided to ask him. And he said, the most important message of Buddhism is that we tell everybody can be equally saved. Even if you're a prostitute or criminal, it doesn't matter. Gender, sexuality, race, status, it does not matter. But anybody can be saved. 
So if you can spread this message to people, then I don't think you wearing something shiny as a problem. And it's a message he now spreads far and wide. Today we join Kodo at a makeup class at a respected salon in Osaka. <laughs> and there's much more than just makeup tips. My message is that diversity is beautiful because I suffered with discrimination against my sexuality, which is homosexual, uh, when I was growing up. So I know that there are people like that everywhere in the world. So by telling them that I'm here, I'm confident, I would love to let everybody know that, well, LGBTQ people are not to be made fun of, um, they exist, they try to live and make things happen. So I think I'm a living proof of that. So that's why I wanted to uh, talk about LGBTQ equality as well. Back in Tokyo, many are receptive to his message. At this event, Kodo and a psychologist host a Q&A about diversity in its relatively packed house. Japan is the only G7 country that hasn't legalised same-sex marriage, though a recent district court decision ruled the government's failure to recognise it was unconstitutional because it violates the right to equality. But right now, LGBT people are not granted the same benefits enjoyed by married couples, like medical visitation rights and the ability to make medical decisions for their partners or co-parenting rights. For Kodo, it's something he hopes happens sooner rather than later. I would love to see same-sex marriage being approved um, nationwide because if the country approves uh, LGBTQ people, there are more strength in um, our existence and there is a solid validation. And this is something that we can be proud of. Japan is a country defined and celebrated for its thousands of years of tradition. And as a Buddhist monk, that's something Kodo respects and has embraced. Now he's hoping to be part of a new generation taking the country forward. I would like to tell my younger self, don't really listen to other people who don't know because you are not doing anything wrong. It's okay to wear makeup or accessories or wear skirts. You're not harming anybody, so be who you are. Protect the light of your value, even if gust of wind is kind of harassing you, you are right, so don't let people take your fire away.